And did, did you always want to be a performer, or did you sort of drop into it and then decide it was for you? I, I always wanted to be a performer. Definitely. I always wanted to be a singer. So it was always a music performer? It was music. No, nothing about acting, comedy, and nothing no. about that. No. Comedy is something that came much later, which I, you know, I'm extraordinarily, extraordinarily talented at. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a very, very funny person, but I just don't tell many people about it. Um, I think, I, as again, I remember when I was younger, I was just a singer. I wanted to be a singer. And even now, I don't. I'm. I'm not that good of a singer. I'm not. You know. I've trained. I've trained as a singer, and I've. You know, I've done various uh, diplomas, degrees, and various singer lessons over the years. And if you were to give me a musical score of a Broadway show or a West End show, I could sing it to you, note perfect. But when it comes to me, I sing the way I want to sing because it's for me. You know, I make. Everyone makes music for themselves. But I, again, I want to be one of these people that go off into obscurity and perform what I wanted to. I don't want people looking at me in the street or people coming up to me. I just wanted to do my thing and then carry on. To me it's, you know, theatre. You're on the stage then, that's it. You know, the stuff that I do in private, and it is private, um, writing music, creating music, it's, I do it and then if other people like it, they like it. I mean, God, there's hundreds of songs that I've done and you know, I wonder if other people would like it, but I don't know, maybe they're just for me. Right, so you mentioned theatre, was that a draw as well at one point? Were you even thinking of maybe going into the well, theatre, I, I the studied, shows that you liked? I studied in theatre, right. um, performing arts theatre. It's not for me. I like an old theatre, I like the red velvet curtains, I like the stage lights, but that's it. I want it just to be me, on stage, doing music. And people never understood me, so there's that, oh, if people see something different, there's the fear. So people were like, oh God, and when fear comes, then, you know, people get scared, so they lash out. And I think, you know, you have to deal with that, but there was no point in hiding me wanting to be different. Not wanting to be, just, you are. Just I wanted to sing different music. Now that I had a reputation, very much, very much a persona, a character. Um, something which wasn't the ordinary. And that was from quite a young age as well. Yeah, from a young age. After after I started doing all this, you know, stuff with friends, when I started doing my own, wanted to sing the songs I wanted to sing, perform the songs that I wanted to perform, um, I was left alone, left alone to it, and then people started getting, you know, and not saying I was, you know, prom queen, but, you know, I had a reputation. If Again, I didn't always win because, you know, it's going to be the beautiful, you know, white, straight, perfect girls and boys that sing Disney songs. And they're always going to win. But are they remembered? No. Unless you're bitter. Like Did you like the Disney songs? I love the Disney songs. <laughs> but the difference is everyone likes the goodies and I like yeah. the baddies. Right. You give me a baddie song any day. I don't want a whole new world. I want, you know... I want a nasty song. I want the baddies song. So when did the Lewis that we know now first So when did there? Lewis spout backwards arise? Well, my mum always used to say to me, you're a queer boy. And um, queer as in a bit odd. And um, and she's like, oh, you're backwards. You're backwards. Yeah. And I always backwards. remember um, <laughs> um, my internet um, avatar they were at the time, the pseudonym was Lewis, and then Lewis spout backwards. And I was walking down the street one day and I thought, Lewis spelt backwards. And I think, you know, people escape on the internet. Not that I did so much, but, you know, people escape and they want to be something which they are a tiny bit, um, but not all the time. And Lewis spelt backwards. It's Lewis spelt backwards. That's just, it was born when the music came. And I mean, for years and years I talked about looping and having my own vocal as the background. And it, you know, I've, I've tried various instruments, piano, dulcimer, um, guitars, keyboards, organs, I've played all these instruments. And, and you can play them to a certain level, can you, can, uh, if you had to? If I had to, if yeah. I was pressed, I mean, yeah. you know, on my, on my latest um, uh, musical adventure, yeah, there's some keyboards on there. I mean, if, if it's not me playing it, it's me that created it. But I don't like to, that's, that's not my it's bag. It's the thing that people wouldn't know. 
Yeah, because it's people that the people move. that have seen you, have seen you do your loops, fantastic, mm. dramatic performances, often very controversial and push, pushing without there. But I don't think that they would automatically go. Can Lewis play guitar? Can Lewis play piano? Can they see me at home? Can Lewis play the dulcimer? You know, but so, a dulcimer. So you can do all that to an extent. And you've got the instruments at home still, or? Um, I don't like instruments mm. around me. Um, so the instruments that I've played have either been borrowed or have been passed on because the musical environment in which I work in is just about me and my voice. So I don't like too many instruments around me because I think I can get distracted right. and I just think, you know, I don't, I could, I could play that chord or I could play that note or I could think of something interesting to do with my voice. Um, by no means I'm, I'm not a beatboxer, I'm not, you know, I'd say I'm more of a, a vocal um, gymnastics, you know, it's more, I'd rather do something interesting and unique with my voice than play a fucking guitar, I mean, <laughs> Jesus Christ, any tosser on the earth can do that. And I got my loop station, and it was the first instrument, equipment, that I ever, I had it, I'd set it up, never used it before in my life, and I sat there and created three songs in an afternoon. From things that had been in my head, things that I'd tried on the piano, I'd tried on the organ. Um, and this just didn't work. But for me, the you know, three songs in one afternoon, I mean, uh, to me that's pretty, it's unique, you know. And I, I wrote um, uh, Hello Hello, um, A Little Love, and Homophobia, which went through many, many different transformations, but Homophobia um, was one of the first songs I ever wrote on the on the loop station, and it just came. It came so naturally because I was working with my voice, and I, I could always hear my voice doing loops and doing different things, but nobody else could. So I think when I had this loop station, it was a revelation. I, I thought, can sense the excitement already that it was, were getting. You know, everyone likes the sound of their own voice, but Jesus Christ, when I realised I could do different things, and as a singer, as a vocalist, if you get something wrong, you get it wrong. You can't hide between the band, you can't hide between the drummer or, you know, the keyboards. You can't hide. If you do a wrong note, you do a wrong note. There's nothing nothing that can hide that. You're the front. So I became very aware of what I could and can't do. The fashion is so superficial and so harsh and so judgmental. But then I decided to take bits of the stuff that I liked, again, like I did for music, take what I liked, take it into my own world. And then I was like, hey, I've got a song that I like singing and an amazing outfit. Why not show everyone else? Jesus Christ, I look amazing. So the Flamboy's boys' outfits were there right from the first gig? From the first gig, right. yeah. That's, that takes a lot of confidence, that does. Mm. First few gigs, yes. And where were your first gigs? Um, well, officially or unofficially. Let's go for both. Unofficially. Um, the place that I worked, Second Hand Rose, a vintage shop. How many people turned up? A handful, mostly right. customers and a few family, you know. Um, not my family. But How family. did you feel afterwards? Um, nervous yeah. the whole time, because it was the first time I'd ever, to people that weren't me, um, had experienced me on the loop station. So, very nervous. And then afterwards, you you get consumed about different things. So then you start thinking, was my outfit okay? Was this okay? So when it starts to line up, and I remember the Llama Lounge, the first Llama Lounge I did, that was the first time it came together. I looked great, and I sounded good. So, hopefully. Okay, so what was the Llama Lounge in this period? I've got very fond memories of the Llama Lounge, but... The Llama Lounge was an experience because, you know, it was when I first started meeting all these friends that would later become best friends. Um, you know, I met uh, uh, my friend Emily in particular, who turned out to be one of the, my, now my closest loyal friends, who was one of these people that could be a friend but could also be involved musically, that could, you know, critique. And, you know, she was always push, pushing me to do more and to go, you know what, you don't need to sing about this because you already sing about this. So and it was, do you take that decision well? Um, I do from the right people. Right. If it's people I respect, 
or if it's people that I think deserve to have an opinion of me, then yes. If it's people that are so used to indie guitar music, isn't it? Because you're experiencing something different and you don't know what you're talking about. Don't mess with, you know. So it's not total self-belief, you're prepared to let other people have an influence? Oh god, yeah. I mean, you must, you're influenced by everything that comes along. As, as a performer, you're influenced by the audience. You know, songs that I've sung many, many, many times, people like hearing them. Songs that I've sung once or twice, people don't like hearing them. So I keep those for me, my personal songs. Obviously, in, a, in years to come, when I'm rich and famous and all the bootlegs and all the, you know, and then blood love it, they froth over it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Semen everywhere, and I love it. But, you know, at the moment, people didn't like hearing them. But, yeah, but the Armour Lounge was a great time to experiment and to meet new people and to meet artistic people, creative people, not necessarily on the same, not level of them, but on the same wavelength, because, you know, the guitar is a very, you know, heavy influence in people's lives. But it was great meeting new people, experiencing new things, and smoking lots of weed. That is very important. <laughs> Does anybody make music that's similar to you? Um, no. No? Nobody who you think actually they've got a, a start I was think, trying to head down? Um, I don't try and emulate people. I think sometimes I look at people and think, wow, I wish I was doing that. But when you're actually performing, you know, I look at Bjork go insane on stage. I've seen her go insane and she's completely with it. And the way she moves, and, you know, it's, it's completely alien to me. And I, I want to do that. I want to do that. But when I'm in the moment, when I'm singing my songs, obviously I'm not Bjork. I can't. I'm so in the moment that I'm just me. When I did a charity event a few years ago, um, which is part of, it was part of my uni course, but it was for um, uh, the World uh, Age. Uh, AIDS, yeah. uh, AIDS, the world, uh, AIDS awareness um, at the air bar, the RIP yeah, air bar. I think that was a performance which, although I wouldn't say necessarily classic for me, but I really, really enjoyed it because the atmosphere and the music, and I thought I, thought I was on it, you know? Sometimes I look back and I think, I was on it then. And there's been Llama Lounge gigs that I've been on in, gigs at the Firefly, it depends on the atmosphere. I remember when I first launched my EP, I was on it. Like, uh, I may have been a drunken mess to any other people, but I thought, you know what? Those sort of gigs when you don't care what other people think, because, you know, other gigs you finish and you think, did I do okay? But other gigs you think, I was hot. I would love to finally be recognised as a musician, as a singer, and as a performer. I would love to have released albums to the mass, you know, record label, blah, blah, blah. You've got no hang-ups about making money out of it. Oh, Jesus Christ, making the money, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll always know that the gigs that I'll do and the stuff that I'll perform is the music that I've always performed. If a record company wants to repackage me, remix me, do one song, and I can live off that song, or if I can, you know, sing one song, be a one-hit wonder, but then create my own music along the way and that's fine. The popular people can dance to that and then the real people, I hate to say it, but my fans, the fans from Worcester that come and see my gigs locally, every time there are faces that are there, you know, faces that are there, I see every time. Those are the people I've been making music for now because it stops becoming a personal thing, so it's becoming a public thing. So yeah, if if some record company decides, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change your look, I'm going to get one of your songs, remix it, put a few instruments in there, they'll do that. We all would. Yeah. We'll sell out, you know. But then I'd always know that the music I'd be doing otherwise, you know, that one hit wonder could fund my lifestyle for the other music. I think people need to realise that a band, a guitar, a solo, you know, or there's more. Musically, I want people to push, I want everyone out there to push themselves. I want to enjoy it, but if I'm going to sit in another band, and sit in another bar and see some guy play a bloody guitar, and win John about his life, not saying that I want another 20 Lewis fat backwards, because Jesus Christ, it takes enough energy to make one. But I mean, I want people to push themselves.